Hey guys, Hackisploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how to detect rootkits on Linux. And more specifically in this video, we're going to be looking at how to detect rootkits on Kali Linux. All right. So this is a very, very important thing that, uh, you know, probably I haven't looked at it and I, I doubt anyone else on YouTube has actually gone through it, uh, you know, really, really well. And the reason I'm making this is because one of you actually sent me a message on Facebook. So thank you for that. And you brought this to my attention. And you know, even I had forgotten about how important this is uh, in terms of forensics, you know, when I was actually going through the certified ethical hacking course. This was probably one of the things they skipped out. And uh, when you're talking about forensics, it's something that's not really looked into, especially your own system forensics and how to, uh, uh, you know, many people focus on Kali Linux and how to attack uh, and how to attack other computers, but they forget something. What if you're the attacked one and what if you have a rootkit on your system? What do you do? I mean, on Windows, the, the process is really, really simple. All you need to do is just download the latest antivirus, update, it, uh, update the databases and it'll, you know, it'll remove all the malware and or rootkits for you. Or if you're a bit of an advanced user, you can use the, the malware bytes anti rootkit program that is fantastic for detecting, you know, and removing rootkits, even some of the deepest ones. So on Windows, you know, th these security options are being tightened up and it, the, the large number of uh, antivirus companies out there, your, your safety is pretty much, I, I would say it's, it's, it's at a good range. But uh, with Linux, many people think that, especially with CAD Linux, many people think that they are the ultimate attack without even remembering that they could be the, uh, the target of, of an attack. And one of the most common ones on Linux is a rootkit, uh, is a rootkit. Sorry about that. Now, the thing is with Linux, antivirus programs are, are not in the atypical format. And the easiest way to hide a backdoor is to use a rootkit. All right. So let me explain what a rootkit is because some of you might uh, not have heard of a rootkit. All right. So rootkit, uh, is essentially, it is a, uh, its purpose is to uh, essentially hide or protect malicious code or software like a backdoor. And its, pro and its purpose is to give, uh, you know, root level access to an attacker. And, uh, you know, for, as I said, giving root level access uh, in forms of uh, backdoors, leaving ports open so that the uh, attacker can connect back. And its, uh, and its main feature or the, the most important thing about this is uh, that it hides itself in the system files and makes it really, really hard for you to detect it. Even if you open up your task manager, your system, pro uh, your system processes, it's very, very hard to detect. All right. So by default, Linux already comes with a rootkit checker. Hmm, I, w I, I think uh, I'm pretty sure most of you, this is the first time you, you've heard of that. And uh, one of the uh, one of the ones that it comes installed with now, back when I was using Backtrack, you know, about, you know, five to six years ago, one of the most popular ones was the CHK rootkit uh, or the check rootkit. A utility that still is installed to this very day on Linux. It is pre-installed. And one of my other favorite ones, which is quite a, uh, quite an advanced one, uh, is the RK Hunter or Rootkit Hunter, which is awesome. So essentially what uh, we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at how to use uh, CHK Rootkit and RK Hunter. All right. So CHK Rootkit is pre-installed on Linux, but if it's not, it's really very simple. All you have to do is just open up your terminal and just go into your apt-get install CHK Rootkit. So apt get install chk rootkit all right now since uh, i already have it installed if i just hit enter it's just going to update it over over itself all right so uh, it, it should come pre-installed with Linux, and i would recommend that you update your repositories and your packages just to make sure you have the latest version running and that's because uh, you all, you actually also want to update the uh, the rootkit database for chk rootkit so that it is able to detect the latest rootkits that are currently out and obviously being being able to detect the latest ones is one of the biggest advantages Right. So uh, let's get started with CHK rootkit. All right. So I'm just going to clear the terminal. And uh, one of you actually pointed out that I should be enlarging my terminal. So I'll do that right now. Thank you for the suggestions. I really take them into consideration. All right. So let's get started with CHK rootkit. Now, by default, if you just run the CHK rootkit, uh, CHK rootkit, let us actually use the help menu, which is uh, can be denoted by the, uh, the, uh, the, the H command. And I hit enter. As you can see, uh, the options are pretty, pretty simple. You have your help uh, version, the available tests. You can check for the available tests. You can uh, perform the uh, debug mode. You can run it quietly. Uh, expert mode. I would not recommend expert mode because that goes into specifying the, the directories 
that you want to look in, for example, the home directory, the, the, at, the etc directory, etc., etc. All right. So the simplest way of running chk rootkit is just by typing it chk, chk rootkit. And once you hit enter, it's going to start the rootkit checking process. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's going to start, uh, checking, um, all of the programs, uh, more specifically the, the third party programs or the programs that come pre-installed. So you can see it's going to go through all the folders and, uh, there we are. It's going to give you the status of whether or not they're infected or, uh, they, they are not infected. So in this case, uh, in my case, you can see that it's going through all the files and it's going to give you the results to the right here. So. As of right now, there we are, uh, the process, nothing was detected. And if I just scroll all the way down, uh, there we are, it is done. And, uh, there we go. Now by default, as I said, this is a very, very, uh, I would say an old tool in the sense that I've used it before on, uh, on older operating systems like backtrack, but it works great on any other Linux distribution. And that's also what I wanted to point out. If you're performing forensics on a Linux distribution that is compromised some way, this is fantastic, you know, and I also want to cover forensics really, really well, because many people are just focusing on how to attack computers. They're really not focusing on their security, which I think is really, really important. You know, you shouldn't take it for granted just because you have Cal Linux installed on your system or any uh, other Linux distribution installed for that matter. All right. So by default, uh, you, I, I haven't been mucking around with my operating system. So I, I wouldn't find, I wouldn't expect to find any rootkit installed, but uh, if you've been doing, you know, funny tests uh, with different types of scripts, scripts that could have a rootkit passed with, uh, with it, uh, then you now recommend to, to be performing this uh, very, very regularly. So that's CHK root, rootkit, nothing special. One of my favorite ones, as I've said, is the RK Hunter. All right. So RK Hunter is not pre-installed. Uh, I actually checked the repositories to, to see whether it was installed as of the latest version of Kali Linux. And it wasn't installed, which is a pity because I feel it is better than chk rootkit. So let's actually run that. So to install it, all you have to do is just apt get, whoops, uh, the rk hunter, apt get install rk hunter, uh, rk hunter and just hit, uh, install. And as you can see, I already have a mine installed. So I'm just going to clear that out. And, uh, let's look at the, the options that we can run here. Now, if I just run the rk hunter command, It'll not run a, a, a test and that's because we need to use some options or parameters. So if I hit enter, as you can see, there's a lot of options. Now by default, I'm not going to be going through all of this because this is more of a very, very specific uh, forensics and, uh, you know, it deals with uh, encrypting, decrypting, and again, specifying the files in which you want to scan the rootkits for. So by default, uh, let's look at the usage here. Now, the commands that we are going to be using is the C command, which will essentially check the local system for rootkits. You can also look at the capital C, which will check the configuration files and then it'll exit. All right. So by default, we'll be looking at the check. And one of the most important ones that many, many people overlook and uh, they get wrong is the update. All right. The update command allows you to check for updates to the database files. Now, why is this so important? This is essentially why antivirus softwares update their database. They're essentially updating their malware and virus databases so that they have, they can actually, they have, they have a, uh, they, they have a history of the latest detected rootkits and, uh, and viruses, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very, very important to check for updates to the database and to update them and update the database so that you, uh, you have the latest versions and you, your system, or in this case, the utility RK Hunter is able to detect the latest rootkits installed. All right. So, or the rootkits in that, that are currently on your system. So let us run a simple test here. So I'm just going to hit RK Hunter. We are performing a basic check. So RK Hunter and C, all right, the RK Hunter and C command, the small C or lowercase C and just hit enter and this will start checking for the rootkits, all right, so just hit enter and just give it a few seconds. Now, again, this is uh, probably a, a more advanced tool for those of you who are looking for one and you're moving or you're looking into uh, computer forensics. This is a fantastic tool as well. So as you can see, it's going to start uh, performing the checks and uh, by default, your status will be uh, will be given here in the form of okay or again if it's uh, if if there are problems it'll indicate it in red all right so it'll go through all these system files all your local files uh, and uh, just give it a few seconds and once it's done it'll give you a summary a fantastic summary that you can actually use in a report if you're performing forensics on a system now as you can see by default it's given us a, a warning here and i'll explain what these warnings are uh, as i said it's going to use its uh, 
its own detection systems to tell you whether you know whether, whether there could be a, a problem it doesn't mean that there is an actual rootkit installed it just means that there could be something that you should look at or fix immediately that uh, could leave your system vulnerable all right so once that's done it's going to hit you to it's going to ask you to to hit enter so i'm just going to hit enter and it's going to start checking for rootkits now and it's going to check it against the databases that currently exist so you can see you have your uh, you have your door rootkit that is actually a quite a popular one the apache worm really really dangerous there uh let's see what some of the other good ones i remember there was the bobkit rootkit that was also something really really interesting that i looked at uh some of these are quite new actually like the uh the f the f8 rootkit which i actually looked at uh, a few months ago it was actually last uh, last year you then have the um one more thing i want to tell you guys just going through this list of rootkits it's a great way of learning what rootkits uh you know the, the, some of the most popular rootkits and how to deal with them all right so uh once the uh, it's checked for, uh, against the most popular rootkits as you can see performing check of known rootkit files and directories uh just hit enter and i'm going to do that right now and it's going to perform the additional rootkit checks as i said this is more of an advanced uh, tool and it'll give you advanced features. So just let it perform the additional rootkit checks. All right, there we are. Checking for possible rootkits, uh, rootkit files and directories. Uh, nothing found so far. It's moving on to the next step. And uh, after it is done, it's going to give you a very, very advanced summary of the scan that you can use in your reports. So for those of you who are asking for forensic videos, here you are. This is more of an advanced section that you asked me to cover and uh, yeah uh, this uh, this is for you so again just let it complete and uh, i'm just going to let it complete so there we are we actually have a warning here which is telling me uh, checking for suspicious shared memory segments so that is more of an advanced um it's more of an advanced forensics uh topic that deals with memory segments now for those of you who have done the comptia a a plus uh certification you'll actually know what this the the shared memory segments uh means it actually it's what it means is that you're sharing your memory uh your memory segments uh if that's for example if you're using two uh ram uh, well you're using two ram sticks uh not not a singular one one of them could be used by another system and has some of the data still left on it all right so now it's going to ask me to hit enter and i'm going to hit enter and it's going to check the network it's going to perform checks on the network. So it's going to check for open ports. Very, very important because as I said, rootkits are usually, especially some of the newer rootkits, like on some of the latest Sony hacks, one of the rootkits, uh, one of their special, uh, one of the special features was that it allowed, uh, it allowed, it open, actually opened a few open ports. It opened a few ports that the attacker could connect by. And you know, once that happens, that's that. So as you can see, SSH root access is allowed on my system. Yes, it is allowed because as I said, I'm running this on a virtual machine and I'm controlling the environment, uh, checking for hidden files and directories. I've also enabled that. So yeah, there we are. Just hit enter and it's done. So as you can see, it's going to give you uh, a summary of all the file property checks, the rootkit checks, uh, the application checks, which were skipped and uh, you can configure it through the help menu and the total time that the check took. Uh, and uh, all the results have been written to the log file. So in this log file, you can find it uh, under the, the directory var log and your RK Hunter log. Uh, so under the log files. All right. So that was how to use RK Hunter and CHK root for, um, for rootkit detection on Linux, more specifically Cal Linux. So I would really recommend that you check this out. Uh, and you know, it's a fantastic tool. Uh, they are both fantastic tools for forensics that you can install on any, any Linux distribution and get the most out of. All right. So. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found value in this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions, any at all, hit me up in the comments section uh, on my social networks on Kick or on my website. Um, and again, I'll be setting up the Discord server. I'll probably be making another video after this explaining the changes made to the channel and how you'll be posting your questions and your video suggestions. So without, with that being said, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.